What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where in today's video we will explore the potential ramifications of a much darker ending to Star Wars The Force Awakens. In The Force Awakens novelization, Rey hears a voice in her head that tells her to kill Kylo Ren after she has defeated him and he is on the ground during their duel on Starkiller base. But the parting of the ground between Rey and Kylo prevents us from seeing what may have happened had she been allowed that chance. So what if things had gone differently? What if the ground didn't part? What if Rey listens to this voice? What if she gave in to her momentary rage? What if Rey killed Kylo Ren in Episode 7, and then boarded the Millennium Falcon with Finn and Chewie as she did in the original timeline? Needless to say, this would have changed everything. From across the stars, Leia would sense the death of her son. Ben and Han, dead. Both of them brutally murdered on the same day. She crumbled to the floor. No longer able to hold her emotions in, Leia would begin to sob. But her emotions took a sharp turn as she came to a clear realization. Rey was alive, and she was responsible for all of this. Had she never come along, Han never would have showed up at all, and he certainly wouldn't have been on Starkiller base. Had Rey not been there, both Ben and Han would still be alive. That would all be excusable though, if not for her final act on the base. Ben was beaten, he was wounded, and he was defenseless. She murdered him in cold blood, and that was an unforgivable mistake. Rey sat in silence as the Falcon ripped into hyperspace and flew back toward the Resistance base. She didn't say a word, her expression was stone cold, but inside, emotions ran wild. It felt like a piece of her had suddenly been ripped away, as if a massive portion of her very being was just missing. Physically, mentally, spiritually, half of her was simply gone. Perhaps that was just how it felt to take someone's life the way she had, to kill them face to face, and watch their expression shift from utter shock to regret to nothing. She was devastated by her actions, no doubt. Remorse was the most prevalent sensation by far, but among the mix of feelings stood an unmistakable hatred. Not for Kylo Ren, not even for herself but for that sinister voice that convinced her to finish the job. It wasn't the first time she'd heard it. That deep, slow-paced, blood-curdling voice had haunted her for as long as she could remember. Usually, it only came to her in dreams, but this time, it spoke to her as if it was standing right there. She couldn't make sense of it, but she had to. Some way, somehow, she would figure out who that voice belonged to, where it was coming from, and what it meant. The Millennium Falcon lands at the Resistance base just as it did in the original timeline. Chewie emerges with Finn in his arms, and that's it. Leia stands at the base of the ship, waiting for the last member of the crew to show herself. Each second feels like a minute, but she doesn't engage. She waits, and waits, and then the Falcon begins to rise back into the air. The door closing as it ascends, and just as soon as it was here, it's gone once again. Rey didn't know what she was doing, she had no idea where she was going, but a resistance base was no place for her anymore. Certainly not that base, with that general. The voice that had spoken to her in the forest began to fade in and out again, speaking to her gently, but with conviction. She did what she had to do, she was right to kill Kylo Ren, and now she would take his place. It was her only choice, she would be Empress, the galaxy would be hers. She hated that thought at first, but it swelled in her head until she was excited by it. Kylo was evil, he killed his own father. She could take his place and make things the way she wanted them to be. She could save the galaxy. Could this actually be the right thing to do? She continued to ponder the idea until a massive First Order dreadnought shot out of hyperspace. Before she could react, it had locked onto the Falcon. She would be pulled in and immediately escorted to the throne room of Supreme Leader Snoke. Snoke would praise Rey for her actions on Starkiller base, applauding her for not hesitating in a moment where his former apprentice surely would have faltered. But rather than claiming her as his new apprentice, the Supreme Leader would set course for a new location. While the rest of the First Order remained where they were, in pursuit of the scrambling resistance, Snoke would take Rey to Exegol, under the direct command of his own master and creator, Darth Sidious. Snoke would bow to Palpatine and then step aside, allowing the fallen Dark Lord to look upon his grandchild for the very first time. Rey could hardly make sense of how the tattered body before her was still harboring life. He resembled an old puzzle with missing pieces, hardly holding itself together, but his voice sent chills down her spine. 
this was the man she'd heard in her dreams. In the same way that he did with Kylo Ren in The Rise of Skywalker, Palpatine would offer his fleet to Rey, promising a seat on the throne of the Sith. As Empress, she would reign over the galaxy, but not just yet. There was one final task which could not be ignored. They still didn't know where he was hiding, but Luke Skywalker remained. A single man should be of no significance to a fleet this size, certainly not with the three of them at the helm. But Skywalker was different. He could destroy all of this. And so, another proposal from Palpatine. Rey would never stand a chance against Skywalker alone. She must strike her grandfather down and allow the two of them to become one. It was a terrifying and confusing thought for Rey, who had only just been swept up in this adventure a few days ago. But there was no choice here. No one was coming to save her. This was the path she had chosen. And who knew, perhaps this would fill that painful emptiness she had been feeling inside. With the stroke of her saber, Rey would strike Palpatine down. As Empress, she would return to the First Order with Snoke at her side. The First Order would tighten their grasp on the Resistance, who had fled to an old abandoned rebel base. They would push forward until the rebels were on the brink of elimination. Death was imminent. The spark was out. But then, when all hope was lost, a familiar face. Under complete control and possession of her grandfather, Rey would return in the nick of time to save her friends. She would be celebrated for her triumphant return, and although Leia would never forget what happened on Starkiller Base, she could not deny the significance of Rey's heroics on this day. She would embrace Rey's return for now, but she quietly reserved the right to change her mind at the first sight of any red flag. From here, Rey would use the map which R2 and BB-8 had put together to make her way to Ahch-2. She would climb the mountain and find Luke Skywalker at the peak, just as she did in The Force Awakens. But rather than offering his father's lightsaber to him, Rey would ignite the legacy blade as Luke turned to face her. Having closed himself off from the Force, Luke was virtually defenseless, but Leia was not. And there she stood, her own lightsaber, which she had retrieved from Luke's hut, ignited and ready for battle. She had snuck onto the Falcon as Rey departed, never trusting her after what she had done to her son. Leia would be no match for the powers of Darth Sidious coursing through Rey's veins, but her presence would provide enough of a distraction for Luke to reawaken his abilities, and that would shift the tide. Rey's power would be like nothing Luke had ever seen before. One-on-one, -on -one, she would have shattered either one of the Skywalker twins, but facing the two of them together was an entirely different monster. But Luke was facing one more massive problem. He had no lightsaber, and that would be a game-changing disadvantage. Luke sprinted down the mountain, determined to reach his sister, who faced a decisive disadvantage as Rey forced her further and further toward the ocean. He leapt over a cliff and landed directly between the two of them just in time, as Leia was disarmed and only a blink away from being sliced in two. He pulled his sister's saber from the air as he fell, and clashed with the intruder upon sticking the landing. Leia stood back up and did what she could to help, throwing boulders at the Empress and generating massive blasts of force energy in her direction. The battle would last for a long time, Rey forcing the issue as the twins played a defensive game, hoping to wear her down but she was younger than them, and they were both out of practice. Her efficiency did not create fatigue. Instead, she seemed to grow stronger as the fight waged on. But Luke and Leia did have chemistry. They had practiced without sabers many times before. They could do this. They really could. But suddenly, a starship appeared in the sky. It was followed by another, and another. Before they knew it, the sky was coated by a massive Imperial fleet, with transports and X-Wings all quickly released toward them. Out of one of the ships, Supreme Leader Snoke emerged. With him, hundreds of stormtroopers would engulf the island, and the Skywalkers would be forced to surrender. They stood no chance. Again, the spark was out. If they were lucky, Luke and Leia would be imprisoned. In the more likely scenario, Palpatine would have no interest in letting them live, and the Skywalkers would fall. With no leadership and nowhere left to run, the Resistance would crumble, and the galaxy would endure what may become the darkest days in its recorded history. Now I think it's worthy of recognition that this story could have actually gone in the exact opposite direction, with the death of Kylo Ren actually marking a significant victory for the Resistance, but I actually believe that 
that is the less likely scenario because Rey giving into her darkness in that moment is a massive failure for her. It's exactly what Palpatine tries to convince his potential pupils into doing throughout the saga. He tells Anakin to kill Count Dooku. He does, and then what happens? Anakin becomes Darth Vader. He tells Luke to strike him down, and also creates a situation for Luke to kill Darth Vader. In The Rise of Skywalker, he urges Rey to kill him. And it is actually a fact that some voice, not necessarily Palpatine, did urge Rey to kill Kylo in The Force Awakens. In The Last Jedi, Snoke wants Kylo to kill Rey. I could go on and on, this is a major turning point for our characters. It's a Sith ritual for the new apprentice to kill someone in cold blood to sort of confirm or solidify their commitment to the dark side. So Rey killing Kylo in that fashion would likely lead to her downfall as a Jedi and her rise as Empress. The loss of both Ben Solo and Rey essentially seals the deal for the light side of the Force as a whole. They were the prophesized dyad, meant to come together in the light to ensure balance in the Force. Without them, darkness would reign, and so it does in this scenario. In The Rise of Skywalker, we clearly see that even with Rey in the light, she and the Resistance would have fallen without Ben Solo. Victory required both of them. The galaxy needed them fighting alongside one another, and in this dark scenario, we have one of them dead and the other seduced by the dark side in the worst way possible. And so that's how and why we ended up on this dark road of suffering and tragedy. I felt that these were the most important plot points to emphasize in this potential scenario. But what do you guys think? Would things likely have gone in this direction, or at least something similar to it? Or do you think Rey would have managed to resist the dark side, even after giving into her anger in that pivotal moment. Comment your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to drop a like to support the channel, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and as usual, may the force be with you always.